Life in confinement can be stifling, but female inmates at the Kirikiri Custodial Facility are challenging the status quo and striving to overcome the stereotypes by acquiring some forms of education while hoping to be free someday. Our correspondent Sarah Ayoko gets an exclusive invitation into the female custodial facility in Lagos where 78% of those behind the walls are waiting trial. As we approach the gates of the female custodial facility of the Nigerian Correctional Service in Kirikiri, Lagos, southwest Nigeria, I realized how fecal life can be, thinking of the women behind the walls. This is the first female facility in Nigeria, established in the 1960s. Freed of all we had, or called our own, we were let into a world different from what we expected. The 63-year-old facility seems to be shedding off its grayness to make the inmates embrace its reformative nature. We are told we'll be restricted for security reasons. Life here is somewhat familiar, especially for those who have been to boarding houses in secondary schools. There are special programs that have been put in place for the treatment of uh, uh, the inmates. Uh, essentially, our mandate is to keep them in safe and humane custody, uh, give them access to justice in motorized formation, you know, identify the causes of their antisocial behavior, and give them some regimes of uh, treatment. In 2018, the Nigerian Correctional Service got a laurel in recognition of its innovative literacy program of equipping prisoners with useful skills and professions to facilitate income generation upon discharge. This is female custodial facility, the only female custodial facility in Nigeria where we have women of great influence, great women that are doing great things with a difference. That's what you like to call it. That's what yes, you like to say. that's what I like to say because we are doing different things that ordinary outside we may not have opportunity to do it. For the inmates, remembering what brought them into prison is painful. With tears in their eyes, they try to embrace the help and educational programs in the facility. To protect their identities, we are withholding their names and hiding their faces. Mary, not a real name, tells me how remorseful a time in the correctional facility has been, although she's still awaiting trial. When I had my case, I was depressed somehow, somewhat, and I was introduced to the uh, various activities in the yard that could help me heal and then help me to know that there's a purpose I'm supposed to live for. I came in here, I find out that most people are innocent but ignorant make us fall victim of the circumstances that brought us here. So for me, in person, I have learned to uh, live a purpose-driven life. Being to prison is not a good thing, but getting inside here and back to the society, it's a different transformation. Although they made the wrong choices, the inmates are trying to make lemonades from lemons. The inmates are said to be doing great things, living above society's prejudices. I came here because I, I was charged for drug trafficking. Shade, not a real name, is from Ikiti State. She joined the vocational team to learn tailoring with hopes that when she gets out in a few months, she can start up a business and get the children back. This is my family, my children, my loved one. Then I mix. I miss my work, making money. You know, being a, being a breadwinner because I'm a single mom. But because of this place now, I can sew. If I go outside, out there now, I'll be able to maybe, if with the help of my family and so, I will be able to get something to start up with. I want to live above that stigma. So uh, that is why I'm trying my best to be something and to take something out of this place. In the yard, women sit in groups waiting for the bell to be rung, a signal the day is over. While they wait, others take to the well to fetch water for the night. 
The facility hopes to phase out the rusty tanks and get boreholes befitting for the facility. For some, hope is thinning out. All they have is time on their hands as they count seconds, minutes, hours, waiting for the day they'll be let out of these confined walls. And while they wait, all they can hold on to is the craft they have been taught. Sarah Ayuku, TVC News, Lagos.